Kieran, Christmas came in September. We got a brand new OpenAI family of models that we're gonna break down and tell everybody about today and talk about the implications they're gonna have on the next year of all of our businesses. What was your take on the news and what were your like initial 24 hour reaction? So it turns out this is not the year of AI video. This is the year of AI code and Coden will never be the same again. And the new models from OpenAI has are going to be transformative for all, how all of us do the work. And that is what we wanna cover in this episode of Marketing Against the Green. Kieran, I think the best, uh, the best example of this is, is this meme, right? The t classic Toy Story meme of like, oh, Claude, Replit, Cursor, all the stuff we were talking about, boom. We wanna talk about Open uh, AI 01. The reality is though, actually we're gonna do a show on Replit uh, in a couple of days. So you're, you're going to want to stick around and see that. But what do all of these have in common, Kieran? They're all about coding. They're all about more advanced thinking and reasoning for math and science related work, which turns into coding magic. We are in a, an incredible time where these models, like Replit is obviously, I, is Replit built off one of the LLMs, the existing LLMs, or they, they have their own? I suspect it's built off one of the existing yeah, LLMs. Yeah, I believe they're, so built, all, they're built their own. All of these things will get better together. I think Claude is actually really incredible for documentation and writing. We've kind of covered that. But OpenAI wants to get back into the game. I think they were losing a little bit of steam. Claude had captured a ton of mindshare. Most of the people in my network had started saying, hey, we gravitated to use Claude, mm -hmm. Claude was great for documentation, writing the artifacts, the coding. And here comes OpenAI with their strawberry model, which they are calling O1. So again, they don't care about brand and product position and why, 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 do, why do they need to? They're just like, whatever. So they want to create a new family of models just so people are aware they don't want to continue the naming scheme because they want to reset things. This is why it's called O1, O1, a new family of models specifically because this model has something that the other models, it would argue, did not have, and that is thinking and reasoning. So I'm sure you've played around with it, Kip, and you can see it now, spending a little bit of time to think about a problem, right? You, you can, there's two, there's two things I, I wanna show you based on that. And for folks re who remember, the last OpenAI model was GPT-4.0, and 4.0 was like, O basically meant for like multimodal omni-channel, like you could take different formats. And so this is a new family of models, O1. And I thought this was an important tweet from our friend, Eric Gileman, who's the CEO over at Ramp, Kieran. He's like, read this twice, not once. We're entering into a world where software can think. And Cognition Labs, which is one of the early startups in, in AI-led coding, basically did an evaluation with OpenAI over the last few weeks to look at the reasoning abilities of O1. And it is wildly ahead of, so the, the Cognition Labs product is called Devon. It's their kind of coding agent. GPT-4.0, the evaluation score was 25.9% of kind of its ability to tackle those problems. The Devon base with the O1 preview was 51.8%, and with production O1 is 74.2%. So this is a, that is a massive. That is a like that is it didn't just double; <laughs> it tripled in its ability to reason from the old OpenAI model to the new OpenAI model. Right. I think there's huge. Again, we expected what was codenamed Strawberry to come out, which I think was based upon some of the early rumors around a Q, I think it was Q-Star model. Uh, we expect it to be like the interim model between where they are and where they want to go with Orion. And I think what's actually been the kind of sentiment to, to date on uh, X and some of the other places that I have been diving into and looking at use cases is this is better than people thought. And it's better than it people is. thought in terms of its capabilities to solve complex problems. It has PhD level reasoning and intelligence and its capabilities in science and its capabilities in math. It is basically like having a PhD level uh, person do tasks for you. Here, <laughs> here task you want. based on what you're saying, I just pulled up Sam Altman's tweet from the O1 launch with some of that data. Walk, walk through it for everybody. It's bananas, isn't it? 
you can see this is not small gains. These are huge gains. And what you can see in the yellow bar is O1 preview, which I think is the models we have available to us today. And then O1 production, which we will get at some point. These are huge jumps. These are not small huge. jumps. And the one on the right is the, mo is the most it's like- It's mind blowing, right? It's the most mo mind blowing one. You <laughs> basically now have a PhD level scientific student in your pocket. And again, humans are incapable of remembering anything that happened or used to be. I just think if you told humankind yes. in 2019 that, hey, I'll just give you a, an incredible PhD a level expert. Actually, I'll give you someone better than that. And you can use them for $20 a month to do anything you want. Would you not be like, oh, this is, this is the most sci-fi thing that I have heard 100%. of? 100%. And I, Wait, and, I and just it's not just twenty dollars a month, twenty four seven twenty dollars a month. Whatever well, you I think, needed to. I think this is, is. I suspect this is free actually because the the, the uh, OpenAI just charge you for capacity and enterprise. So most people will probably get to play with these models for free. So it's just like here you go, like PhD student, <laughs> take it. <laughs> you get a PhD student. You get a PhD student. You get a PhD well, student. Well, uh, so so Kieran, you you're bringing up the most interesting advancement of this model, which is like coding and science, but also my favorite subculture moment of this release of the, la of the first 24 hours. So for folks who don't know, this got released on a Thursday afternoon and we were recording this on a Friday morning. So it's been a little less than 24 hours since it's been out. And Kieran, I don't know if you have been seeing these, but I'm really enjoying the deep science related demos and like tests. And so this, this person, it comes out and says, hey, LLMs always get this science question wrong. I want to go back and pause it for you so I can read you the question because the question's ridiculous. How could one melt an ice block 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters in a winter night at zero degrees Celsius, so it's at freezing, using only the following items, a very powerful hydraulic press, 0.2 liters of tea in a pet bottle, and a spoon? This uh, is just like the most amazing <laughs> question. It's a, I assume the tea is warm. Um, yes, but it's only 0.2 liters. So it's a very, okay. very small amount. Drill a hole 15 centimeters into the middle, fill it with tea, get a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. I don't know why I'm pretending okay. to all this. So what, what's happening here is the what most effective do? choice is a very powerful hydraulic press. Press. Pressure-induced melting, conversion of that mechanical en energy to thermal energy, increasing the surface area and facilitating heat transfer. And then it tells you why the other things aren't that helpful. I so if, this, if this is incredible. Me, like that is bananas to me, my friend. I, I'm just like, what world am I living in right now? And that is something that I've always wanted to know. <laughs> now but, I just now I just want to like walk around the world and just like find obscure things problems. to ask it. You know, the problems I'm going to get, actually, you know, the ones I'm going to get obsessed with, I actually am pretty obsessed with space because I'm a dork and I love sci-fi. So actually having a, sci a PhD science level person be able to tell me things about space is going to be pretty addictive to me. What if you do some like LinkedIn joke post that is like, about space like star wars right. or some right. fantasy related questions that the models the, the model okay. hypothetically answers for you well you know the thing i will try to do is i wonder how good it will be at writing a lightweight sci-fi um book actually that is the thing to do is i again this comes back to personalization one-on-one -on -one. we should talk about some of the implications i do want to quickly transition uh into one of the places that i do think this is a nightmare for and <laughs> You know, no offense, but count on care. Kieran Flanagan to bring the pessimism, everybody. Yeah. It's not you know well, you can't well, be halfway through a show without Kieran no, no, no. dropping this some is, real this bummers. Is, this isn't pessimism. So I will say that the uh, Clarner CEO Sebastian did a really great podcast with Sequoia recently. Talked he about did. a lot of AI innovation and talked about the fact that he had a, a half an hour meeting with Sam Altman way back when and basically said to Sam, look, people are not going to be happy when AI starts disrupting their jobs. So you should actually disrupt jobs that people do not like and don't care about. As in like, if those people get disrupted, no one will mind. Like and the scientists? Is, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it wasn't scientists. It was like lawyers. Mm. Uh, I can't remember. It was law lawyer CEOs and another one. But th mm. this one is like a ca the category that fits, law I think lawyers, no offense to anyone listening to this show. It's consultants. Okay, real quick. On this show, we help you save time by pinpointing the AI strategies that actually deliver so you can ditch the ones that don't. 
To help you stay focused, we just dropped the new AI Trends from Marketers Report. This resource is packed with original research and findings on the latest trends in the AI space. And we've got some really surprising insights that you can only find right here. Now you're gonna learn the top five AI tools across all of marketers. Who wouldn't wanna know that information? We're gonna tell you exactly how teams are investing in AI and where they are seeing a high return on investment is AI gonna help or hurt your marketing career? So you can steal hours of research for free. Just grab your copy from the link in the description below. Now we're gonna get back to the show. There is large firms of consultants who take an order of money of companies to do like average tasks. And so Ali K, uh, who's an incredible AI voice and we want to get on the show. Yeah, so if Ali, anyone knows come on the Ali, show. I think we're, we're working on it. Or if anyone knows Ali, can you tell her that you think the podcast is awesome so when we uh, reach out, she wants to do it? Basically, she had some really good ones, right? So she had, uh, the pre again, all things you can imagine being done by a, um, a consultant firm. So she had this preview, can assess the risk of a company merger, right? Ooh, I love very, this. Very, very, very traditional um, task given to large consultant firms. But the re what you'll see is, the reason it allows it to work through complex problems with multiple steps, and I actually want to get into at some point, you have to prompt these models differently. So that's oh, one yeah. of the ones that I thought was really cool. Uh, I will say that I used Claude to build out an investment plan recently, and it was unbelievable. And this is a much more advanced version of that where you can actually use the new model to evaluate an entire investment project. One of the things that jumped out to me is like basically everyone has a kind of AI enabled consultant and they can work through really large uh, complex projects. And I can, I'll hand it back over to you. I can get into why, why in some of the prompting uh, yeah, tips that you should have. Before we get into the prompting, just a couple of quick things. One, one point that I would make with the demo you just showed from Ali around, wow, O1 is really good at advanced reasoning, which means it can take the role of a lot of consultants. The next decade of technology is about, we're going from software as service to service as software. That a lot of the service markets will become software themselves, right? And there'll be new software and technology markets that displace professional service markets. That, that's for sure. The other thing that's gonna happen, Kieran, that I don't think we've talked yet about on the show is how you, when you move something to, from human time to technology, you then also change its role in how you use it and you move it up way further in the process. Like you and I can now, like you and I could just be kicking around an idea of acquiring a company or doing something and we could do a rough cut analysis very quick, quickly with AI. And previously we would have waited till the very end of the process to do that and only doing it on one company. And now it's like, oh, we're kind of considering these five companies to kind of go off your example. And you can do it for all five companies. You could do it much faster, much cheaper, much earlier on. And it's just gonna really evolve how we work. And I think lead us to making better decisions as humans, right? Again, the future is service as software, less software as a service. And one of the things it's gonna take to do that well, Kieran, as you've, as you've kind of alluded to so far on the show, is prompting. And one of the core demos for o, the model O1 from OpenAI was about how, how it used a prompt to build a video game from one prompt because it can think and reason and do multi-steps. If you have the right one initial prompt, you can develop something like a video game. What I would love, Kieran, is give us your take on what is different about prompting in an environment where AI has more advanced reasoning and thinking. They released some advice on prompting and they had like four clear steps. And I think it's really um, prudent to follow these steps. And so, you can see the way this model does has changed because the first thing is to keep prompts simple and direct. The models excel at understanding and, re and responding to brief, clear instructions without the need for extensive guidance. So you've in traditionally seen these really large, complicated mm -hmm. prompts. And what it's telling you is to keep it much simpler and direct. And the other one that we used to do is, you know, we used to ask the we asked the AI to like think step by step, right? Because mm -hmm. you're trying to enforce the chain of reasoning and then ex ex actually explain your reasoning. So when I used to ask it for a problem, I would ask it to explain the reason it got there. And so it asked you to avoid the chain of thought a thought prompts since these models perform reasoning internally you actually don't need to ask it to do that it is doing that itself internally and so you can just ask it to do something and it can work out the steps itself right so we can stack rank 
steps on top of each other and perform them in sequence. The other thing that it asks you to do, which I was doing with Claude, is use delimiters for clarity. So basically you think about using things like XML tags or section titles. So if you remember way back in an episode, I used to show you prompts where I had thought about them as, in terms of XML code. Mm -hmm. And I was like coding out how these things were, how the model should think about the different sections and things like that. So that is actually following what Claude has been doing for some time. If you actually go to Claude, there's a template they provide that you can upload and have prompts for you created with these kind of tags. And that just helps the model understand how to section out your ask. And then the other thing I thought was really interesting, it said limit additional context in retrieval augmented generation. So basically RAG. So basically do not overwhelm it with context or documents. So usually we kind of just went and said, here's a bunch of like documents yeah. and like do you know do some stuff with this. And it's saying only give it the most relevant information because you don't want to you don't want the model to overcomplicate its response, right? Keep it and if you actually look at what it's telling you, it's saying keep the prompt simple and direct. Keep the context simple and direct. The model can reason for itself and work out the kind of step by step and then kind of delineate your asks with these kind of XML tags. And so I think there's four clear instructions on how you can get more from this model that you can start to instrument pretty rapidly. Uh, what's what's funny, Karen, is that this is basically just life advice, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, yeah, wrapped up like in the, prompting yeah, yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah. It, it, my in my desk in my office, I think I've said a couple times on the show, I have a I have a print uh, over to the left that says overthinking will effing kill you. And all this prompting advice is like we do not want this model to overthink. Don't give it too much information so it has too many choices and can overthink. Exactly. Turns out the best life advice is also the best prompting advice because these models are getting closer to thinking and reasoning and the less overthinking, the better. Well, this is what we've said before is that you want to think about these AI assistants like you would about a fellow colleague or an employee. And again, you wouldn't just turn up and say, do Facebook ad, right? Like you would actually <laughs> give clear and concise asks. You would tell it what a good Facebook ad is and you would be really direct and, and simplistic in your ask. And again, I think you're right. As the more and more as the smart that these get, the more you have to just talk to them like you would a fellow employee on Slack. I think that's the best way to think about how you actually prompt in the future. Yeah, look, I, I couldn't agree more. We wanted to come at you ASAP on this show. So this is a quick show today. We canceled everything, moved stuff around. We had to do a lot to make this show happen for you all today. I hope it was great. Kieran, I also ordered my new iPhone today. i excited, like first new phone in a couple years. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty it. pumped I, about that. My, my phone is four years old. Yeah, my mine's iPhone. three and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. due. So I got I, so I to I'm, I'm make the change. Well. Yeah, me too. But to recap today's show, OpenAI launched a brand new family of models, O1. The biggest difference here is the ability to think and reason, especially for complex math and science related tasks. It is like having a scientist with a PhD in your pocket, which is mind blowing. What all of this is doing is continuing to usher in and make 2024 the year of that coding got democratized and that AI is allowing everyone to write code. And Kieran, we have to do a follow on show on the implications of that personal disposable code, personal web apps, all of those things. So, so that's, that's to come. And if you're prompting these new models with more thinking and reasoning, don't make them overthink. You got to give them simple instructions, just enough information, but not too much. What else would you add, Karen? I think you want to get playing with these models. Like they're, they're the pace of change is so rapid that you are just at a distinct disadvantage if you are not using a PhD level expert to help you with your task. Like just think about it, right? <laughs> totally. If you had two, if you had two people sense. and you said, I'll give you this expert and you can use them whenever you want and you do not get that person and you should just like, you're doing this similar type of work. There's only one of those people are gonna be way more productive and uh, effective. And so I think the quicker people understand what has happened and the more productive and efficient they're going to be in their role. I think that is the perfect note to end on. We will see you real soon on the next episode of Marking Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better.